This is the X30 wind turbine prototype by Spanish company X1 Wind. It's a floating platform, has a traditional three blade design, and it hopes to take offshore wind to a whole new level. This map shows the potential for harnessing wind energy across the world. As you would expect, some countries are windier than others, Britain looks as miserable as ever, but across the entire map there is one consistent trend. Most of the world's wind resource is offshore, not onshore. And according to the Energy Sector Management Assistance Programme, just 1% of the global offshore wind potential could generate enough energy to meet the current global demand. As it currently stands though, offshore wind power as opposed to onshore wind makes up just 7.1% of the total installed wind capacity worldwide, which on greater reflection isn't surprising given the challenge of installing, operating and maintaining turbines far out at sea. Not only that, but according to the World Bank, over 70% of the world's wind energy resource is found in deeper waters, unsuitable for fixed turbines. And it is this that, in recent years, has led to the rapid development of floating wind turbines. Few designs, however, have been able to achieve the cost competitiveness, scalability and flexibility that X1 Wind's project aims to achieve. With the tagline, Disrupting Offshore Wind, X1 Wind hopes their turbines will be able to achieve cost competitiveness not only with fixed offshore turbines, but even onshore arrays. How will they do this, you ask? Well, it all comes down to some very clever design considerations. The concept proposed uses a single point mooring system, configured to point downstream. This essentially turns the turbine into a massive weather vane, allowing it to passively self-orientate, improving overall efficiency. Traditionally, however, wind turbines point in an upwind direction, and there is a reason why this is favoured. By having the blade upwind of the tower, you reduce the disturbance or shadowing by the tower of the airflow onto the turbine blades. There is also evidence that downwind turbines are noisier due to this disturbed airflow and can experience greater blade loads compared to upwind turbines. So why opt for a downwind design then? One of the main drawbacks of upwind turbines is that the tolerance for flexing of the turbine blades is very small in order to prevent the blade striking the tower under high loading. This means that the blades need to be stiffer, often calling for more complex, heavier designs with higher material and manufacture costs, which quickly add up when considering a commercial scale project. In a downstream design, such as the one used by X1 Wind, the blades flex away from the supporting tower or structure. This means engineers are less constrained by measures to prevent tower strike and the blades can be made longer, lighter and crucially at a lower cost. The use of a passive as opposed to active orientation system also means less can go wrong in the way of maintenance. Perhaps the jewel in the turbine's crown though is Exxon Wind's trademarked pivot boy connection system. Contrary to other floating wind designs using semi-submersible or spar boy systems, pivot boy uses what is known as a tension leg platform or TLP. Instead of using a heavy ballast to stabilise the wind turbine, TLP mooring works by connecting a platform with excess buoyancy to the seabed by taut cables, restraining the vertical motion of the platform. Exxon Wind's smaller X30 prototype, which has already been tested, is the first fully functioning floating wind platform to successfully use this kind of mooring. Whilst the use of these cables under tension does increase the risk of fatigue and requires more expensive anchoring systems at the seabed, TLP does come with a number of very attractive advantages. Not only does it reduce the overall mooring footprint and weight of the turbine, but the clever design of the pivot buoy also allows for easier installation. In the case of X1 Wind, the pivot buoys are pre-installed with the mooring system, allowing the actual turbine to be assembled onshore and then towed to the site. This simultaneously opens up advantages when it comes to servicing, as the platform can be easily disconnected and towed away for maintenance. In part due to its downward design, X1 Wind have completely redesigned the structure of the wind turbine as we would imagine it, using a tripod design instead of a single tower. 
This eliminates the high bending moments and stresses of tower based designs and instead distributes the loads in tension and compression. This kind of tripod based design is becoming increasingly more competitive in large rotor turbines, even more so in floating systems, where large moments create difficult design challenges. X1 Wind states that this makes the structure more scalable, and whilst the structure above the surface may have a larger footprint, the single point mooring system ensures a small footprint below the surface, where it arguably has a larger impact on marine systems. As for the size of the final product, X1 Wind hopes to have their 14 to 16 megawatt commercial scale X150 platform in use by the end of the decade, using a whopping 240 meter diameter blades. For context then, the current largest wind turbine in the world has a blade diameter of 260 meters and a capacity of 18 megawatts, whilst most of today's new offshore wind power projects have capacities in the range of 8 to 12 megawatts. What is perhaps so striking about this design though is not its performance or efficiency, nor is it its scale. It's about using clever designs and systems together in a package that makes it perfectly suited to the application finding sensitive trade-offs between economic, environmental, and practical factors. If there was one word to describe what this design offers, it's adaptability. Adaptability in scale, adaptability to location and conditions, and in an industry where change is happening so rapidly, adaptability is what you need. Just before I end this video, I wanted to say a quick thank you for all the support this channel has received so far. I'm just about to go into the second year of my engineering degree, and this channel has really been a huge area of enjoyment for me. I'm hoping to post more videos and get a bit more consistent over the next few months, and please consider subscribing if you enjoy my content.